Hey guys, it's me again, and I'm bored with nothing much to do, except look at this and, uh, you know, wonder what else I can do to this. If you guys remember, this is the Sega Genesis that I got that the LED didn't work on it, so I put a blue LED in it, and then I painted it black, and painted that white, and, uh, made the, uh, Japanese games fit in the slot. Um, but, uh, you know, I wanted to do a little something more to it. Something simple where I don't have to buy any parts or make up circuit boards. There are a lot of mods you can do to the Genesis, but um, for now, I got a simple one in mind. If you guys remember, I had this uh, HP media case lying around that I used for spare parts. It's where I got the blue LED for this from. And uh, it also had this <coughs> kind of mounted in the front of the case. Of course, like most computers, your USB and your front audio and firewire. But more importantly, it had the AV inputs right on the front of the case. And I thought, wait a minute, what if I grab the uh, the jacks out of this? And well, I think you guys know where I'm going with this one. It's a simple AV mod so that you don't have to find or use the special uh, DIN connection AV cords. Um, you can simply mount your own jacks in the back of the Genesis. A lot of people have done it. A lot of people have also gone one step further and done the S-Video mod. But with the S-Video mod, you do have to build a little circuit board with an amplifier in it and fit that all inside the Genesis. And not only is that much more advanced, but you got to buy some parts. <coughs> I'm keeping it simple. I'm just going to do the straight-up AV mod. Uh, and uh, let's uh, begin. First things first, obviously, open up the Genesis, and once again, with the Genesis, you don't need any special screwdriver, standard Phillips screws. Now when you pull the top off, you're going to have to be careful of the LED. You're either going to have to disconnect the LED, um, or you're going to have to just pull it out of the thing as I've done, because mine's been hard soldered. Um, so, you know, you just got to be careful when you pull the lid off that you don't rip the LED wires up with it. Um, and from here, we just really got to take the screws off this metal plate and uh, take the board out. And once you get the metal plate off, you can see the entire board. Uh, now, you have to remember that the Model 1 Genesis doesn't output stereo from the, from the back here. So you can get the composite video signal from here but you're not going to get the stereo sound, you'll just get the one one channel mono sound. But we do have the headphone jack up here, and there is a way to get the sound uh, from the board there and run that to the back as well. And then uh, that's about it. Now the only thing, once you get the metal plate off, um, the board is still held down by two screws for the cartridge slot. They go right through to the bottom, so you got to take these two screws out. After hacking that little box to get the little jacks out of it, I've put some electrical tape on the top piece of the plastic cover. I'm going to mark where I want to drill it, and then I have the two audios a little closer together so the video one stands out a little easier. There we can see the holes. I don't have a lot of drill bits, so unfortunately I had to go a little bit bigger, but uh, it should be alright. And uh, now I'm going to start soldering some wires. Now according to the uh, instructions I found on the internet, basically this right here is your composite video, and this here is a ground. Okay, this is the block that goes to the DIN connector on the back. So you got this 9-pin DIN connector that's slider here and there's uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, I think eight little soldering points on here. And uh, you can get the instructions on the internet. It shows you that this one's the composite video and this one's a ground which we're going to use for everything. And then the audio we're going to get from the headphone jack uh, section of the board. Once again, based on the instructions online, this is where you can get the audio off the headphone portion. Now there may be a better way to do that, and that's to get the audio before it goes to the headphone section, but I think that would require another amplification circuit uh, as you'd be getting the audio sort of off the chip before it's amplified. The problem with the headphone jack is it is going to go through the volume slider, 
Uh, so you will change the volume coming out the back with the volume slider which also adds a little bit of noise of course it'd be nice to get a direct amplified or pre-amplified signal but uh, that'd be much more complicated this is the way that most people seem to do it so that's what we're doing once you get all your signal wires just of course wire them to the corresponding jacks and as I said you can share a ground and now the hard part, finding a way to stuff that all back in and mount the uh, jacks in the back of the case. And there we have it. Now of course the question is, <laughs> does it work? Alright, it's hooked up as we can see to the TV. So far so good. The picture works. Once again, that's the power and AV cables. Oh, the sound works. Okay, so that's the AV cables and the power. And like I said here, That does adjust the volume. Maybe you like that, maybe you don't. But that's how it was done. And it seems to work pretty damn good. I'm happy with it.